Hello, welcome to week seven of the course. This week you'll be learning about how to prepare your case study for the course. And to do so, I thought it would be helpful to look at a practice case study and to apply a model that uh, has certain steps that will help you analyze your case study. Part of a two-part lecture on um, that case study. So your case study action plan is actually known as assessment five. It's a key assessment in our program. And what that means is that we collect the data and use it for um, accreditation purposes. So it's a very important assignment. The case study itself is located in your syllabus and it's worth 35% of your grade. Um, it's due for the US students on May 4th and it's due on March 9th for the Austrian students. There are seven steps that you'll need to follow when preparing your case study. These seven steps are adapted from Hansen's case analysis framework. I've put them on this slide and we'll go be going into each one carefully. The first step is to read the case study and the questions that accompany it carefully. And if you're following along in your module, you probably already did this. The second step is to read it again, highlighting the important information, what you think is important in the case study. I can't stress this enough. A quick reading of a case study usually results in a poor job on the analysis. So take the time to read it several times and deeply understand what the case study is saying. In the third step, you will summarize the case study in a paragraph or two. This will force you, even if you don't use this text, this will force you to think clearly about what is going on in the case study. We ask our students to summarize all the time, and that's to get them to understand, to be able to put things in their own words. The same thing applies here. By putting it in your own words, it will help you more fully understand the case study. The fourth step asks you to identify the problem in a single sentence. What is the problem in a nutshell? One sentence, and that's sometimes harder to do than it sounds. In the fifth step, you will select significant information and place the data into three categories, people, data relating to places, and data relating to the program. In the sixth step, you will review and prioritize this data and think about which of the identified significant information is most relevant to your problem. These case studies are all very complex in nature. There are many things in the case study and you may not need all of the information. So it's important to be able to weed out some of that information and to focus on only what you need. The last step in preparing for the case study is to refer to the data that you prioritized in number six to solve the problem and respond to the case study questions. Let's see how it might work. If you haven't already done so, take a break from the lecture, pause it, and read and reread Practice Case Study, which is found on the course site, and the accompanying questions, which is also in that document. Then highlight important information. You recall that that was steps one and two that you need to complete. You'll note that this is an actual practice test item from the New York State Education Department Preparation Materials for School Building Leaders. You can see more of those materials at the link. The practice case study involves a consolidation of two schools, School A and School B. Students from School B are coming over to School A because their school is being closed. You need to consider all of the things as a school building leader that are going on here. The first thing you do after reading the case study is to read the questions. 
There are four questions in this case. Number one, what are two important issues you anticipate may occur as your blended school opens? Number two, explain why and how it would be beneficial to involve families with regard to these issues. Number three, what actions would you implement to work with families to address each issue you identified in Part A? Or in other words, uh, the first question. Explain why these actions would be effective. And number four, what additional challenges might your actions create and what are some ways you could manage those challenges? So now we have read the case study and we have read the questions. Step three asks for you to summarize the case. I have summarized it here. You're the school building leader of high school A covering grades nine to 12 in a large suburban district. Due to budget cuts, 1,000 students and 40 staff members at high school B will be transferred into your school, bringing total school student enrollment up to 4,000. These two schools are very different. High School A offers more AP classes, a higher graduation rate, more Regents diplomas, and more students attend college. The two schools were sports rivals. Re results of a survey administered to parents indicate that a greater percentage of parents at School A express positive attitudes toward their children's school a greater percentage of parents at School A returned the surveys as well. Of particular concern were issues surrounding parents' interactions with teachers and comfort level at the school. You were visited by family members who expressed concerns regarding increased distance and commuting time that transferred students will incur up to 30 additional minutes for some students. Class size crowding issues, and the effect of the consolidation on the school's athletic program. Families from School A also expressed the concern that students from School B were not as academically oriented. So you'll note how this is shorter than the original text, and yet it contains the majority of information. It's a summary. Step four asks, that you identify the problem in the case in a single sentence, because this step will help you to focus on the most important issue. I've, I've chosen to write the problem this way. Two very different schools have been consolidated into one larger school, so faculty, staff, family members, and buildings need to be merged into one cohesive entity. Step five requires that we select significant information and place this information into three categories, people, place, or program. Let's take a look at what I mean. If we look at the people category, we can go through the case study and anything having to do with a person or people we can turn into a statement. For example, number one, you are the recently hired school building leader charged with leading the consolidated school, A. That's about a person. It's about you, the school building leader. Number two, approximately 1,000 students in grades nine to 12 will transfer from school B into school A. It's also about people, the 1,000 students. Three, approximately 3,000 students in grades 9 to 12 already attend School A. Four, 40 faculty and staff members will also transfer from School B into School A. It's important in these case studies not just to focus on the students. You obviously have to consider their welfare, their, being, their well-being and achievement, but you also have to consider the other stakeholders and what's going on that can impact students. Five, the school superintendent has met with you regarding the consolidation. 
Six, in a survey sent to parents, a greater percentage of parents from school A responded. Items that are item, one item, can be categorized as placed. One building, school B, is being closed and another building must accommodate additional students, personnel, and resources. Four items could be classified as relating to program. Number one, the school serves students in grades 9 to 12. Number two, students at School A are offered more AP classes, have a higher graduation rate, more Regent diplomas, and more of their students go on to attend college than students in School B. Three, parents at School A indicated greater satisfaction overall with their school than parents at School B in all categories. Of particular concern at School B were issues surrounding parents' interactions with teachers and their comfort level at the school. And finally, four, parents have met with you regarding increased program concerns, distance at commuting time that transport students will occur, class size crowding issues, and the effect of the consolidation on the school's athletic program. All of these statements relate to the school's programs and the level of quality at those programs. Now let's turn to what we do next. 